prize winning journalist, and I won't be treated this way. Bob, it's not funny. It's not funny because it tells the agent that this is a person that's going to have attitude. And when I talked to Kensington way after the book was published, they said, we don't ever want to work with her again. The point is, you don't get attitude. And she did this when we first got the contract. So I said, I'm walking off this project. And so I did. And so there's the difference. Before I correct it on that on the book where he said she was injecting herself with Liz, a reporter or something, was she, in fact, a reporter following her at the time? Or was yes, she, but or Kensington, she fictionalized it? Kensington has a particular formula. I knew that formula. I wanted her to follow it. When she followed it, her book went right through. Yeah, plus you told Mary Sue, and you really shouldn't mm -hmm. do that. And so this book, Kensington told me, is much shorter. They were not pleased with this book. And the story is a good story. It's the Mary Hill story, where Mary Hill killed her own child going 80 miles an hour and killed um, her uh, child's best friend and incapacitated or brain damaged for life the boy that was in, in the car. And Mary Hill lives. And so I, I don't like Mary Hill because I work for her in market research. So it's my revenge to get back on her. But this woman didn't want to play the right, you know, do yeah. the right things. And it's an example but of what you an don't do. But interesting story. Yeah. But you it, but can still mess up an interesting story with bad, you know, bad editing or doing a, uh, something like that where you're sticking in a Mary Sue. Um, one of my beefs is if it's badly edited or you find lots of typos, uh, my personal hatred, multiple exclamation points. <laughs> I annoy my friends with that. But if I run across too many typos, too many incorrect grammar, too many examples of all this badness, I'll put the book down. I don't care how good the book is. So, question? Uh, editing, if I may terrify you for a moment, there's a few colleges now that are accepting heat speak on your essays. Oh. And that means you're going to start editing, having to edit them instead of like. <coughs>
are very talented have had to go the route of self-publish. So it's no longer such a thing where just because it's self-published, it's crap. There's a lot of good stuff in self-publishing. So uh, just the really important difference for that for me is you have to edit, you have to edit well. And the best way to do that is to learn the rules. Just learn them. If you never got taught them in school, learn them now. There's tons of books on my library shelf at home that are all about how to this, how to that. I learned it in school, but sometimes you need a refresher course. If it's been years since I've been in school, then you have to remember something sometimes, some obscure grammatical rule, and I'll go and get that book again, pull it out, and find that and reference it. But you have to learn the rules, and it's just... It's the difference between a book that it can succeed and a book that can fail. Now the scary part to me is nowadays you can find things on bookshelves from traditional publishers that are crap. Typos out the wazoo. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Traditional publishers give it into the copy editors. Yeah. That's, that's where you're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If editing poor editing or no editing will throw your reader right out of your story. And he's not only lost your readership, he's lost all chance of building the fault. As an, as an independent mm -hmm. author, or any author really, but as an independent author, you have to build the fault and you have to build the readership. And the only way you're going to do that successfully is if you edit. Mm -hmm. you, editing is like a really well done building. You shouldn't see that it's well edited. You should just be able to read a good story and not notice it. So it, it takes more than one person. You got the writer, and you usually have to have someone outside the writer do the editing. And it's been my own experience with this. I know the story. I've spent months, years developing these characters, developing the storyline. I know them so well. I may reference something in the story. Oh yeah, it makes perfect sense to me because I know five years of the back history, I know how it's going to end. Looks the reader like, why the heck are they doing that? Mm. It takes an outside view to see that. Or you've read a page five times in the last two days, you're going to miss typo. You're going to read it the way it's supposed to be read because you know that part of the story so well. Exactly. You, you really need you need, fresh, you, read it. you need fresh eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And the way uh, for five days a week. Yeah, it, well, we discussed this before, that uh, you will insert knowledge in your head that you're not putting on the page. And because you know it so well, you forget that you didn't tell them something, and the readers are going, huh? Because you thought it was there, because you're so used to it, but you didn't notice that you didn't actually tell them something kind of idle. And the fresh eyeballs will catch that. I once wrote something, it's my classic mistake. I wrote, she walked the door. Should have been, she walked to the door. My, I was so used to that, that phrase and what was going on in that scene that my mind inserted the two. And I didn't type it, didn't notice it was missing. But the fresh eyeballs, my friend read the story, and she's like, um, she walked the door? I'm like, what are you talking about? And we had to hunt through to find it because she had read it a few days ago. And we hunted through and we found it. Spell check won't help you with that. <laughs> Were those typos? Yeah. Or because um, I think that's really people? interesting because I understand that while you, while uh, in the writing process, I know, and I'm not, I'm not actually great at writing more than the idea of a person. She's actually a great writer. But um, I, think <laughs> <this is> really, <laughs> I think this is um, just to get an um, interesting point is that you want, um, you want to express um, to the to the reader that uh, the, the kind of the whole concept, but you don't want them to feel confused. But you also don't want to give away the whole story because you want right. them to build the pieces. So I think that's a really hard line to um, to, to define. You know, to, right. how much information. You and actually, that brings up a good on. point. We were discussing this the other day. Um, my, my boyfriend and his best friend. His best friend is his editor slash fresh eyes. And sometimes they don't see exactly on the same page with something like that because uh, Brett will think, well, you're missing this. And you know, Kevin's thinking, well, I can't tell you that right now. Or it'll exactly. mess up, yeah. you know, the mystery or, or whatever. So that's that's the lesson of you don't always have to do what the editor says. You have to use your writer's knowledge of what you want to do with the story also. So now and then it's okay to fight for something because that editor doesn't necessarily know what your plot is yet, and maybe they don't know what you're trying to accomplish by not giving that away. Is yeah, this so. what this reason you should learn to work with your editor? Yes. Yes. I want to say something that's a little tangential to what I'm saying, but from the moment I heard earlier. Uh, the, uh, you know, 
writer, you're going to totally screw up your book. And you have to realize that computers do actually make mistakes. And you also have to realize that your computer up here will make mistakes. Now, I, for example, uh, yeah, like I said, I've been at this record since 1973 in one way or another. All right? And the whole idea is I will find myself sometimes, like, oh, gee, I've been making this mistake all these years. All right? For something yeah. to say. So you have to actually look. Yeah. You ever run in, it's like me and my partner go to the right? <laughs> Your editor should almost have one. Like, you say, you say you have, like, you need fresh eyes. Yeah. And I, if my editor was my friend, I 
she's in hiding because it's kind of a fantasy novel, so it's, it's not modern day by Earth by any means, but it's a fantasy novel. And it's one of those things that if you're weird enough, they'll burn you at the stake. So she was keeping and hiding her weirdness. And so this creates a character who's very body shy. Not someone who's gonna, you know, run around in a miniskirt and go, wow, you know, like Hustler magazine. And yet I got about this far and there was a scene where the, she got found out and all of a sudden she's imprisoned in this tower and she's wondering if she's gonna get burned at the stake. And all of a sudden this local witch decides to rescue her and sends all these minions to rescue her. Well, for some reason, rescuing her involved an orgy all of a sudden, a monster orgy, <laughs> which, you know, this body shy, oh my god, I can't let anyone find out character was suddenly Hustler Magazine, whoa, let's have an orgy, and I was like, what? <laughs> now, if you want to read it. Now, because I now want to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, tell him the name. No, no, no. no. I don't even remember the guy's name. I'll look it up and I'll I'm just, I, well, I'm semi-joking, but it's like, <laughs> all I right, now I'm curious of where it got to that it point. was so bad, but if, if, you know, if you want to read erotica and you want to read about orgy scenes, go for it. But don't make your major character be this person whose life and death is involved in never being found out. This person is not going to go, yay, monster orgy. It made no sense. It threw me right out of the story, and I just, I wanted to chuck it in the trash. So, you know, you got to pay attention to that sort of thing. In, 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 in my defense, I just want to say, uh, it's kind of like watching the Huey Bowl movie. You can't believe it's something that bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you are if you actually have an editor, then it's great if they look at that sort of thing as well. But uh, if you have a friend who's looking at your stuff, helping you out, try to pick someone who's going to notice that sort of thing. As well as like an orgy? Yeah. yeah. Like not not that the orgy. I, is I'm bad. joking. I'm joking. I know, but the misplaced orgy that made no sense for that character because it's it's just silly, and it'll knock you out of the story just as bad as too many heads. Yes, yes. You need to know the person. You've got to be really honest with your editor. Your editor has to be honest. Kind of like a mean editor. You've got to be mean.
tell you, look, you know, I like you, but you've got this mistake, this mistake, and this mistake. And they're not afraid because you're friends to point it out to you if you're going to have the friend help mm-hmm. you out. And she's been fabulous for me. Yeah. Well, my mom says that my ubiquitous use of the word and in paragraphs is very avant-garde. So. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel? Yeah. I'm in love with your vocabulary already. <laughs> Thank you. 
too much. It was like three pages worth of how this one sword was made. <laughs> Move on. So by the time she got done with me, it was about four paragraphs. And less is more. <laughs> I'm just